because this question comes up a lot, and I'm knee deep in the middle of discussions with some really high end clients on the internet in a in a in a video game center in an esports arena for an esports contest. You know, there's a lot of debate over what the right thing is when it comes to buying your internet, and it's and it might seem simple, and I don't want to um, make it seem like you know these these very, very intelligent IT professionals in other industries don't know what they're doing because they're very wise and smart in their particular industries. But it's just not the same when you start talking about gaming. And so let me give you this example, and I won't use the client's name or whatever, but we're working with a really big client, and it's somebody that has worked with a lot of big um, venue or a lot of big organizations in the past. So they're referencing times when they've worked with MLG and times when they've worked with ESL for pop-up events. And, you know, their, their statement to me was, is that, you know, every device that's in your network, you should plan on that needing 15 megs up and 15 megs down of bandwidth. And you multiply that by the number of machines in your network. So think through this with me if we do some easy math. So if you have 100 PCs in a network or Xboxes or PlayStation, doesn't matter, 100 devices total, you need to plan on 15 megs each. So that would mean you need to go out and get a 1.5 gig internet connection for 100 stations. Now, that's totally not the right math. Like, you know, this is not what something would consume at one given time, and that's ultimately the maximum it would consume if it's doing a ton of different things. So if I'm at home and I have my one PC and I'm playing games on it and I want to flip on a streaming program and upload that stream to Twitch while I'm playing a game at the same time and I've got all these other things going on, maybe my Xbox is updating or whatever it is, that scenario is unique to the at-home experience for one person on one PC. If you go out and you set up a LAN center, an eSports arena, whatever, let's say you're going to stream that event. 50 PCs in an event, and you're going to stream that event. You're not going to have 50 of those players each start their own stream to Twitch. You're going to have a device or a room or a broadcast area that is the host box or connects into the online servers and grabs the stream, produces it, adds in the overlays, does all that. It streams up, and it will then need 10 megs to 15 megs of upload speed for that stream to be consistent. Now, if I'm a player in this land center, in this arena, I don't care how serious of a contest it is. I will not need 10 or 15 megs. Most video games that are out there today, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter about the, the quality, the, the, the resolution that you're running or anything else, they use way less than one meg for video game traffic, way less. Like you just don't need that much throughput to play video games. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to break it down a little bit more because I think here's where a lot of people run into trouble. So, Back at your house, you've got your PC and you invite four friends over. Now your four friends are there, okay? They're plugging things in. First of all, you're plugging them in. You're probably running on a standard home router, okay, which is not built for doing all of the different traffic, not because of bandwidth, but because of processing and the CPU and that because it's doing network address translation so that it can turn everything that's coming into your network into private IPs for every device that you're hooking up in your home. It then has to remember, okay, this device over here's IP is 192.168.whatever, some private IP in your little home network, but this outside website or game server or whatever is looking for my main IP here on my router. That router has to then translate that based on the MAC address on that device's network card or their wireless adapter to send that traffic to them. So now that device becomes a bottleneck because it's translating all that into that private network. The other thing is, is that most home networks are built on shared internet between other people in the neighborhood, other people in the building, even if you buy commercial grade internet. It's like the old days when we used to call up and buy a phone line for all of you kids out there. We used to have things in our houses called phone lines. So you would, dot, you would call up your local telco. You'd order a phone line for your house, which is already there. They just come out and, and sometimes they'll just hit a button and then they turn it on. Your home phone line was like 20 bucks or 30 bucks a month. If you opened up a business and you called the phone company and you said, hey, I want a business phone line, it's the same daggone copper lines 
coming in there, but all of a sudden the price was like 80 bucks a month or a hundred bucks a month for business service for your phone line. It was the same thing. I could pick up my home phone and call that business line. That business line could pick it up, call my home phone. It's the same technology underneath it. They just charge more. Mm -hmm. A lot of these commercial grades are, they say that it gives you better priority in their queues, but it doesn't really. The key I always tell my clients is that you want dedicated internet, but you can always tell based on price. Unless you're really awesome and you're in a Google Fiber area where you can get a really good rate on fiber, you're probably going to pay $600 to $1,200 a month for the correct type of connection in your land center. If you're getting a quote at $99 a month or $199 a month, it's probably not something that's going to scale up to 60, 80, 100 active PCs at a time unless you do some really creative traffic shaping, maybe by a second line to put all your web browsing and, and streaming on a second line and use the other line for just gaming traffic that might work, but that's a lot more complex setup with your router. I just am blown away and going into these situations where we're working with really big clients and things and they start looking at these numbers and doing the math. Here's where I think the problem is, is that a pop-up install for MLG or ESL or anybody else, they don't have time to get public IPs routed in and to negotiate that IP group. The ISPs don't want to temporarily route public IPs for a one weekend event you know, they're more interested in doing that on a two or three year contract. So the best bet that these places can do is they go in and they just over purchased bandwidth to make sure that their event runs smoothly. And then also during that weekend event, they have so much other stuff going on, updating things, trying to get the games patched and things. They don't want to mess with rate limiting every device and bandwidth shaping every device just for gaming traffic. So what we do We'll set up public IPs. Every device in our networks get a public IP. It's not that hard to get. You can explain it to the ISP. This is my background starting an ISP. That was the first thing I did out of college was start a software company, right, followed up by an ISP. I know how these work. I know what you need to do to be able to, to show what you're going to use it for. And when you do that, you're setting this up for the long haul. You're not doing it for a temporary setup. So I think that's part of the problem is that these – companies are used to dealing with somebody rolls into town with four or five semi trucks. They throw it all out. It hasn't been updated in a month. They spend two or three days trying to update everything. They need as much bandwidth as they can consume. They don't want to have any risk that the stream is going to lag because they're going to put on this big production. So they just over purchase for that event. And it's not necessary. It's just a safety cushion for them because they're doing that. And I'm not saying what, what we do is not safe because you know, I'd like to reach out to people we've worked with, like Ian up at uh, Not Your Parents Basement Lounge. So we went in there, and he's running his whole facility, I believe, on 50 megs of bandwidth. You know, mm -hmm. And we just rate limit every device to 5 megs. His game server has like 50 megs open. He has a few IP addresses he can assign for streaming. So if he has a, a guy come in that wants to do streaming with his own machine, he gives them that IP. That IP will have 20 megs available to it. It gives him a constant stream. It doesn't affect the other gamers on the network. They all have their own stream or their own bandwidth to use. I these sort of things are things that are beginning to become tiresome for me to have to go through this back and forth with everybody that we work with. And and in this scenario, we're just recommending to the venue what they should put in the place. We're not doing the routing or anything else. So I'm just I have to sit back a lot of times and give my opinion, but it's ultimately their decision because they're going to be doing the routing and it's their network. We're just going in to plug our machines in and make sure our software works. So, you know, ultimately, if the Internet doesn't work, the, 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 the problem falls back on whoever the network administrator is that set it all up. Mm -hmm. If it's us, I will only do it one way. You know, like I will only do it with – us putting in the router, us doing the routing for public IPs, us rate limiting and traffic shaping that, that network properly the way we see fit and the way we've done it for years. I also think that we've learned that through necessity of doing shows like Gen Con and PopCon, where you go in and there's 10 megs of internet available for, and I'm not even making this up, $10,000 for four days. You right. know, like that's the rate in these convention centers when you set up for internet because you're only there for a short period of time. 
So you figure out very quickly what's important. Is it important for that person on that one machine to be able to have five videos loaded on Netflix and Hulu and radio streams coming in and p- another window up, you know, that in the background of a game they're not even playing anymore and then League of Legends up on their screen complaining about their, their ping times on their screen. They're in charge of their own world on one machine in our network. If you load a lot of stuff on your machine, you're the only one that's going to lag. You're not going to affect anybody else in the building. So that's just kind of what I wanted to share today a little bit about when it comes to going out and setting up the internet and how important it is to make sure that they do a good job up front because lag, latency, response times are things that your center will be judged on and that experience will be judged on. So obviously some people just err on the side of, I'll just buy a crap ton of bandwidth. And so if somebody comes in and they... They, they overwhelm my modem with requests searching for custom CSGO servers in Steam. We just have enough available that it doesn't affect everybody else, and we just hope that 100 people at once don't search for CSGO servers at the same time. Right. So, all right, so that's Unfortunately, our... Unfortunately, I don't have no. any two cents because that's, really no, that's, that's your world, not mine. Right, and again, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that becomes a crucial part that somehow when these people make eight-month, nine-month business plans... And they do all of this stuff. They 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 just leave that until the eighth or the ninth month. You know, it's the eleventh hour, and we're like, okay, you know, we've known we can get internet, so now let's start thinking about what that means. How do we get internet in the space? You know, it's it's kind of what we talked about last time when it's like, hey, how do we get games working? You know, like it's like, oh, I can do it at home on one PC. It's just easy. Why, you know, it can't be that hard. I'm a gamer. I know how to do that stuff. You just have to make sure the games are updated. You just have to make sure you have enough bandwidth for one PC. It just doesn't multiply out when you put in a hundred of these things in one location. 